Look at your neighbor and say, your new birth is supernatural. Therefore, go ahead and look up. Therefore, you're preaching, see? See, therefore, that's a, that's a good word, therefore. You know why you put the word therefore, therefore? It means because of that. Therefore, you are one with the Holy Spirit, which is one with the Father and one with the Son. So you and the Father are one. Now, here's what I want to get. That oneness in your new birth that you're right now in heaven, I want you to begin to see with your spirit eyes. Your spirit has eyes. Your spirit has understanding. But because we shut it off and religion has caused us to become old covenant and put it off to one of these days. See, everything about the old covenant was future. That was the thing about the old covenant. All the promises were to come. Everything was symbolic of that which was going, going to come one of these days. Even the high priest and the old law was a type and shadow of that which would come, which would be the true high priest, Jesus Christ. So everything in the old covenant always says tomorrow. So when you take that philosophy of everything being tomorrow and you put it into the new covenant, you're living in a new covenant with an old covenant mindset. You're, you're flying around as a butterfly with a caterpillar head and mind and thoughts and limitations because it puts everything off to tomorrow. You are right now in your tomorrow, but yet as believers we still wait until one of these days. The Bible says that when he appears, we will know him. And the reason we will know him, because the Bible says we'll be like him. Other words, he's saying you're not going to be like Adam, the man of the earth. You're going to be like him, the Lord from heaven. Well, how are you going to be like him? You're going to be like him because you think like him. You, you have the attitudes that he has, that heaven has. And you have the insight of the kingdom of God. Jesus told his disciples, it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. They said, well, duh, duh, duh. He said, well, you're not supposed to be that dumb. Well, he didn't say that, but he said that. When they said, well, we don't understand this. He said, it's given to you to understand it. You're sitting there and tell me you do not understand it, but it's given to you to understand it. Now, I'm telling you, it is given to every one of us to understand the third heaven, the mysteries of the kingdom of God. If you don't understand it, why? Because you've been crawling around, born again, a butterfly, thinking like a caterpillar. Now, don't be surprised if you throw scraps out, that you'll gather the animals. I want to show you a couple of things in these seeds we're planting. You know, we, we throw scraps out. Anytime you want to drive up at night, you got all kinds of eyes looking at you. Off about a about hundred yards out across the field, they're looking. Out by the woods, they're looking. And uh, every once in a while, you know, we drive a little closer to see what they, we, we've, just a little bit of everything, without going into details, out there eating those scraps. Well, don't be surprised if you throw scraps out, the animals will come. Joshua feeds skunks right on his porch. Huh? Man. The little, little nice little creatures there, they're always waving at you. Hi. Hello. Hello. I think I started Josh off on that when he was younger. I shot a skunk in our front yard. It kept, well, it kept coming on our ports and 
we used to burn wood in the stove then and one one night Judy stuck her head out to pick up some wood and there was a skunk right there and uh, so she got back in real quick and she said there's a skunk so uh, I slipped out slipped around and kept waiting for that skunk to get in the position and someone told me if you'll shoot him right in the neck it'll paralyze them and they won't spray I had a perfect shot and he just fell over and boy was our house lit up Jesus said well, why did you do that I said well I guess that myth isn't true kind of like the night when uh, our dog ran out and got run right into a skunk and the skunk sprayed it run back into the house and scooted across our carpet with that wet I said, once we get through this dog, we're never going to have another dog in the house because of that. But I lied. We did one or two times more times. But my point is this. They say if you wash those dogs in tomato juice, it would get rid of that skunk smell. So, boy, we tried everything. Tomato juice. And I want you to know it didn't work. It smelled like tomato juice and skunk. <laughs> but anyhow, so I think Josh had, because the next morning I had made him go out there and, and take a shovel and carry that skunk off. And I think from then on, he's kind of like skunks. Got that skunk odor, see? No, but it was a little bit aired out, but he said, I, that stinks. I said, well... Put a clothespin over your nose. Get out there and do it. Somebody's got to save us here. I don't know how old he was. He's probably 14 or 15, right? Somewhere around there. I don't know how old he was, but I guarantee you he's about six foot three. <laughs> he's the only person I know that at that time, 12 years old, he was six foot two. And, and everybody thought he was older. And uh, matter of fact, he was taller in the second grade than his teacher. Of course, that wasn't that big of a deal because she was shorter than Rhonda. <laughs> it's just a small joke. Okay. But you can throw rocks at those animals that you're feeding. They'll run off, but they'll come back, right? You can yell at them and you can rebuke them in the name of Jesus. But unless you get rid of what they're eating and how you're feeding them, they'll just keep coming back. Same thing with the serpent. Get rid of what he feeds on. And I want to read you a scripture in Isaiah. I want you to listen to me. We're not going to put it up. I just want you to listen to me. Train yourself to listen. Isaiah 65, 25. It says, The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust. Everybody say dust. It says dust shall be the serpent's meat. Now what does a serpent like to eat? Dust. Do you remember in the book of Genesis when the curse come upon God spoke a curse to Adam? He told him what's going to happen. Spoke a curse to the woman. Said what's going to happen to her. And you remember the serpent? He spoke a curse to the serpent, and he told the serpent what was going to happen. He said, from now on, serpent, you're going to crawl on your belly in dust, and you will eat dust. So what's the curse of the serpent? Eat dust. And Isaiah 65, 25 said, says, dust shall be the serpent's meat. Now, he said to Adam, Adam, you come from dust. You're a dust man, Adam. And to dust you'll return. Adam's a dust man. What's the serpent's job? To eat dust. The serpent's job is to eat Adam up. Anytime you live your new life, allowing Adam life 
to rule, you've got a lot of serpents. Because you can rebuke the serpent, throw rocks at him, whatever you want to do, but he's going to come back. Because you're got what he, you've got what he wants to eat. Why am I trying to get you out of the dust that you no longer become serpent's meat? I want you out of the dust. God told Abraham, he said, your seed shall be as, many, as, as much as the sands of the sea and the dust, if you can count it. How many knows that there's, that's dust seed? But then later he said, your seed shall be as many as the stars of the heavens, if you can count them. My question to you, do you want to be dust seed or star seed? You are star seed right now by your new birth. If I can get you and me, I'm, I'm learning this, and I want to teach you a little along the way what I'm learning. I'm learning more every day about how to live with the stars. How to live from the throne of heaven where I'm one with the Father. I want to teach you what little I know and I still need to know much more. But what little I know has been transforming me from a caterpillar mindset to a butterfly mindset. It's been freeing me up to go further and do more and enjoy the beauty of my new creation while I'm on earth. So you see, unless we get rid of that which feeds, it will keep coming back. So we deal with the dust. Where is the dust if I'm born again? The dust is in my spirit. The dust is in my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions. We've spoken over and over again. You get your mind saved by renewing it. In other words, you transform your mind. The Bible says, Romans chapter 12, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. And it's not talking about one of these days. It's talking about now. Transform by the renewing of your mind. Changing your mindset. Get away from the caterpillar mind. Transform it to the butterfly mind. Well, you see, let's get rid of what the serpent feeds on. The dust. The dust of the carnal mind. The Bible says the carnal mind in the book of Romans, it says... It's an enemy of God. It's an enmity with God, it says directly. It will not conform with God. The word carnal there is a word that means it's, well, Josh used the terms, it's a uh, carne, and that's meat. It's a natural mind that come with the fall of Adam in the garden. See, Adam went from walking with the voice of God to walking with the voice of the serpent. 